During the decade of the 1970s, the growth of Houston, Texas, characterized the vitality and vibrance of the Sun Belt. Tens of thousands of newcomers came to the city, attracted by the mild climate and an area laden with opportunity. In that 10 years, Harris County, which represents a major part of the Houston metropolitan area, experienced a population increase of 37%. As the 1980s began, Harris County boasted a population of almost two and a half million. Along with the growth came increasing pressure on the highway systems of the city and surrounding region. In the 10 year period of growth, motor vehicle registration increased 80% and vehicle miles traveled went up 75%. This growth translates directly into traffic congestion. Good morning, it's 6.40. This is Linda Thorman with the KULF traffic report. Traffic is building on the north, south, west, and Katy freeways. No Houston is now the fastest growing major city in the United States. But traffic congestion threatens that trend. Unless ways are found to maintain mobility, Houston's phenomenal growth may be impeded. Of the many possible solutions to Houston traffic problems, many will require decades to implement and will be extremely expensive. But at this moment, some short-range alternatives can provide significant relief. In the case of Houston, one that is now working on the North Freeway is ContraFlow. Groundbreaking ceremonies at North Shepherd and I-45 symbolize the start of what transportation officials hope will alleviate some traffic congestion on the North Freeway. Transportation officials point out that the 9.6 mile long corridor will be the longest in the nation and the only one to operate in the morning and afternoon rush hours. 47, News 11. Contraflow is a simple concept that provides priority express treatment for buses and van pools during periods of rush hour traffic. Contraflow makes maximum use of total roadway capacity to increase the movement of people in the direction of peak traffic flow. With Contraflow, the lane closest to the median barrier on the side where traffic volumes are lightest is set up to be used by high occupancy vehicles traveling in the peak direction. The contraflow lane is separated from the other traffic lanes by removable plastic pylons. In essence, the contraflow lane gives peak direction travelers an extra lane which is reserved for high occupancy vehicles. Houston's 9.6 mile long contraflow lane, the longest in the nation, and the only contraflow lane operating during both peak periods is located on the North Freeway. Characteristics of the freeway design and traffic flow permitted the use of contraflow on this particular freeway. Planning, design, and construction of this $2 million improvement involved close cooperation between local, state, and federal agencies. The contraflow lane is designed to be used by Metro buses, buses contracted to Metro, registered van pools, and full-size transit coaches such as intercity buses and airport shuttles. Allowing van pools to use the contraflow lane permits the facility both to move a greater number of people as well as to increase the visibility of vehicles using the lane. It also complements an extensive van pooling program developed in Houston by private companies. 
Authorization of vehicles to use the ContraFlow lane involves driver training, insurance requirements, vehicle inspection, and other considerations. One way to describe the configuration of the ContraFlow treatment is to follow commuter vehicles using the lane. In the afternoon, the ContraFlow lane is opened at 4 o'clock to carry traffic outbound from downtown. It remains open until 6.30. Bus riders board at various downtown locations, while van poolers meet at their respective rendezvous areas. During afternoon operations, Metro authorized vehicles leave the Central Business District via a one-way street, Louisiana, and pass under the I-10 interchange along with the non-priority northbound traffic. The first section of the afternoon contraflow route is a separate single lane that passes under the Interstate 10 interchange for a distance of about one quarter mile. is located in a grassy median. This section of the ContraFlow route is reversible. Gates and warning signs are used to close this section to all traffic during non-rush hours. The next half mile of the route is located on the shoulder of the southbound Interstate 45 overpass. In the afternoon, priority vehicles proceed north over this section in a contraflow manner. As the afternoon traffic heads north to the terminus of the contraflow lane, it uses the inside lane of the southbound roadway. Throughout this distance, it is a true contraflow operation moving against the southbound traffic flow. For afternoon contraflow traffic, two exits are provided at the northern end of the lane. One is a loop ramp that allows traffic to exit to the nearby surface arterials and to the North Shepherd park and ride lot. <laughs> The other exit feeds contraflow traffic back into the regular northbound lanes on Interstate 45, allowing the contraflow vehicles to continue north in the regular traffic stream. Between 6 and 8.30 a.m., the contraflow lane serves traffic destined toward downtown. Two entrances are provided at the north end of the contraflow lane. Authorized vehicles approaching from the north on Interstate 45 enter the contraflow lane via a crossover in the median. Authorized vehicles coming from the North Shepherd Park and Ride Lot can gain access to this lane using a specially constructed ramp. From the north terminus, priority vehicles proceed toward downtown in contraflow, operating southbound against the northbound traffic. At the approach to the Interstate 10 interchange, traffic crosses over to the shoulder of the southbound I-45 roadway. Here, inbound priority traffic flows concurrently past non-priority traffic. Priority vehicles then follow the exclusive median lane through the interchange area to downtown.
Although contraflow takes a lane away from off-peak direction traffic, its impact on that traffic has been minimal. For off-peak direction traffic, travel times increased slightly, and minor increases in the accident rate were experienced at isolated sections of the project. Peak direction volume, travel times, and accident rates have not been affected by the operation of the contraflow lane. Metering of traffic using entrance ramps, as well as total closure of selected ramps, has helped to maintain acceptable travel speeds for vehicles not using the contraflow lane.